You know, one thing that I haven't yet done in this series is build a proper castle. Well, today I want to change that, and I'm going to do it right here. Now, it's not going to be a huge castle because, well, we have to stay true to the series name, Creative Quick Builds, so it's going to be fairly, you know, medium-sized. However, if you do want me to do a large castle sometime, you can let me know down in the comments and I can probably make that into a video. And today's episode co-pilot is Sandy, because she has decided that it is time to sit in my lap, so she is here and purring quite loudly, so if you hear her, my apologies. I hope it makes your day better, though. Anyways, let's not waste any more time and get into establishing our palette and foundation. I've just gone ahead and rewatched those clips, and I realized the audio was pretty messed up, so I've restarted OBS. Hopefully that should fix it. Here's my rough layout, and these are the blocks that I plan on using. Now, you might have a few questions. One of them will be, man, Kian, isn't that wall a little bit thin? And my answer to that is, yes, it is very thin, and it will get thicker, so do not worry, this is just an outline. The other question might be, Kian, why are you making your walls out of such a soft clay block? Well, the block is clay. Um, and that's because I like the color, and this is Minecraft, it, and this is creative mode. It doesn't really matter that much to me whether or not the block is considered hard in the game, as long as it looks pretty good. I mean, it's not going to serve any function except looking good, so I don't see why I can't have a nice squishy block for the walls. Obviously, this isn't a very effective fortress since you can easily get in the back, so, I mean, I wouldn't be losing much by making the walls out of something soft. Now, one of my goals for this is to work on diagonals, which is why I've made this wall a little bit janky, and that wall over there as well. And I want to make the patterns fit both on straight end edges and diagonal edges, so that's kind of a little bit of a challenge for me for this build. And now, of course, my next step for this is to add the shape and detail to the walls, make them look nice and pretty before we work on the interior. I also just realized now I forgot to talk about the block palette, so let's discuss that a little bit. And the reason I've chosen these light colors is because they contrast nicely with this otherwise kind of ugly biome. So I wanted the fortress to kind of pop out of the hill instead of blending in, which is what using- oh, and I can't use my inventory while I'm talking- <laughs> which is what using this would cause. It would make it blend in. Now, you can make good fortresses that blend in, and most real-life fortresses blend in. However, this is Minecraft, like I said before, and we want it to be nice and colorful and pretty in that way. So that's another goal for this. Make it nice and colorful and totally not like the very bleak and kind of colorless biome that it resides in. Well, I have to say the colors I've used here are certainly quite belligerent, however, I do enjoy them a lot. I'm definitely preferring them over their grey stone and more realistic alternatives. Speaking of the wall design, it's finished, and you can see that there isn't actually that much detail, and that's for a very specific purpose. And that's because the scale of this thing is, I think, large enough that it doesn't need that much detail. Just look at it from this angle. If I packed the walls with detail, I feel like it would take away from the shape, uh, not the shape, the, 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 the overall feel of the thing and make it just a little bit too busy. So I wanted to try to balance that and make sure the build looked good overall instead of just looking good on a smaller scale. You also may notice that I've put these bone circle things on top of the towers, and that's because I want to expand them, and I want to build the tops of them using bone blocks. Similar to how most medieval houses would have something like a stone base, and then on the upper layer, log pillars and wood insets, except of course in this case, the stone is clay and... Oh my, I forgot, I forgot what the block was called, prismarine, there we go. And the wood, in this case, is bone blocks. I think the palette works nicely, and it still has the same kind of solid foundation effect as, you know, your standard stone material. So that's that's kind of what I'm going for here. I know it's I'm not doing a super great job of explaining it. Hello, Sandy. Oh, you're awake. Hi. <laughs> I'm getting distracted here. But I hope I hope that explanation kind of helps somewhat. I've also made the flags green, they'll probably move at some point once I get more towers in, just to contrast again with the walls to make it look nice and pretty.
Anyways, the next stage of this build is of course to start planning out what's going to happen in here, and mainly working out how the keep area is going to be shaped. Pointy roof time. Whee. And now, there is this thing. Um, it's still, it's in the same style as the rest of the walls, pretty obviously, and it protects this side of the fortress. So now it's pretty well protected, although the walls, they're still made of nice soft clay, so, I mean, it's still not a very effective fortress, but it works aesthetically, and that's what counts. Now, looking closely at this little area here, you'll see these poles that I've set up, and this is to add another color, because as lovely as I think this is right now with these main colors, I think it still needs, you know, a little bit more pizzazz, and that's where these are going to come in. These are going to support little tent structures that are going to be off the side of this little tower area here. And the other reason that I want to add them there is so it fills in this big blank space. We don't like huge blank spaces. We want stuff to be going on. We want this fortress to look, you know, like it's actually lived in instead of just this hollow old, you know, relic. So that's what I want to work on next. And I'm going to add some more stuff down here and clean this area up and make these stairs actually usable because right now they just kind of go straight into this dirt wall and nobody likes that. I mean, it's pretty useless if you're if you're being, you know, attacked and you want to get up here quick. Anyways, I'm getting distracted. Let's let's do this thing. Okay, well, maybe not that much color. I kind of like the way these look with the white wool, so I'm going to keep it like that. There is more detail coming, but I think this is a great start. And you can see I've also attempted a little house, and I'm still working on it. Still working on the details. It's probably not going to be this shape when it's done. Actually, you know what? The shape is cool. Uh, I'm going to make something similar with the house over here, and then maybe a few more smaller buildings in here. And I realized that I actually forgot to talk about the reason why these little buildings on top of the towers are so sparsely detailed. And I've made them that way because I want them to fit nicely with the overall style of this fortress, which, as you can tell, is a very simple style. There isn't that much detail going on, so I figured if I loaded these top bits with detail, it would look out of place and... Well, kind of awkward, to be perfectly honest with you, so I thought if I made these nice and minute in their detail, that they would look a lot more at home, and I think they do. Anyways, I'd better stop rambling and get back to work building a little courtyard area here. I'm quite enjoying this build, actually, more than I thought I would. Oh, and it looks like I forgot to put a piece here. I think that fixes it. Yep, there we go. And now there's another building and another building. I'm pretty happy with these two buildings, however, I do not like this one right here. It looks like a very fancy hut. Well, these ones look nice and noble in my opinion, this one is just, you know, hey, I'm a hut. I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, so I think I'm going to remove it, just get rid of it entirely and fill this space with something else. This is what this was made for, it was supposed to fill this space, however, I think it blocks too much of this house, and I want this house to be nice and open because of the way I did the roofs. I, I like that style and I want it to be featured more prominently than this house allows. So this house is going to go, and then I'm going to add some more life to this area, and then we're pretty much done. We're, we're on the home stretch here. Man, it's a lovely view from here. I, I like how the uh, fog really kind of actually goes with the color, as strange as that sounds. <laughs> Anyways, I've finished in here, and I'm pretty proud of it. I kind of like the sort of, you know, sordid chaos that this little bit appears to be. It's a definite contrast to kind of the ordered appearance of the walls, and I kind of like that. It's sort of, you know, an appearance of serenity on the outside and then marketing chaos on the inside. Maybe this is sort of like a border outpost. There are two border nations kind of, you know, trade with each other. I don't know. Anyways, I've kind of struggled with what to put underneath these tents, so I've just put the um, colored terracotta that kind of matches with this whole, the whole color of this build is, and I think that works okay. If you have any other suggestions, for wares that maybe these people could sell, let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Another thing that I'd like to hear your thoughts on are these lanterns, and I've got two variants. The variant I have here, and I've got another variant out here, and I was kind of wrestling with which one to choose. I ended up going for the lanterns because they were more realistic. You know, I'd see a lantern 
making light in real life more than I'd see, you know, a little pull, especially in a medieval era such as where this one would probably be taking place. So let me know which design you prefer, which design you think fits better. I'd like to know your opinion. It's nice to contact builders from around the world, see what they think, see how they think differently from you, you know. Anyways, I'm getting off track. Another thing you'll probably notice is I actually kept this house, and I did that because I couldn't think of a better way to fill the space, and I actually kind of grew, the design kind of grew on me after a while, and I've changed it up a little bit, otherwise it's pretty much the same, and I think it fills the space nicely. Also, I've made a little wheelbarrow design, I'm not sure about it, just thought it would be nice to put in, you know, you can let me know about that too if you like. Man, you've got a lot of stuff to write about, you don't have to write about anything, it's just a thing if you feel like participating, you can. Um, other than that, there's not really much else to talk about. I've pretty much talked about everything, I think. If I forgot anything, I'll probably put it in the comments. And unfortunately, I didn't get to the interior for this video. I just thought it would take up too much time and make the video drag on for too long. Plus, my time's getting a little bit tight now and I gotta finish this video. So, I'm going to leave it at that. You see, I've blocked these ones off too with black concrete, just to make it look finished. Well, obviously it's not finished, but if I just had it open, it would look a little more awkward, I think. Um, so, if you'd like to see me finish something like that, let me know, and I can probably come back to this and make a mini-episode where I just briefly go over the interiors and design them in the same style that the exteriors are designed in. If you're not interested, that's fine. You just don't say anything or tell me you're not interested. It's all up to you. I love reading comments, I love seeing feedback, it's always nice to talk with anyone who watches my videos in the comments section. It's very wholesome, I like being constructive on YouTube, that's fun. Anyways, with that out of the way, that's it for this build. Thank you very much for watching to this point if you have. I hope to see you next time, and I, more, oh my goodness, <laughs> I got the outro wrong. Ah, oh yeah. I hope you were inspired by this to build your own fortresses. I am really excited about this project and really inspired. I haven't really attempted fortresses that much on my own, and I think this is a nice gateway to maybe do more of that. So, like I said in the beginning of the video, if you'd like to see a, a larger scale castle or fortress, let me know. It's pretty fun, and I'm enjoying kind of building something in more simple style like this. Anyways, farewell.